Have you watched the first four episodes of season six of The Crown yet? I have. I was part of the Harrods organisation at the time. I worked for Mr Al Fayed at his radio station Liberty 963 in London on the Brompton Road when all of history was changed. Here is my take on it all. Hello, ya wrongin. Let's talk about Netflix and the new season, season six of The Crown. Now, what legitimacy have I to talk about series six of The Crown? Well, between 1996 and the back end of 1997 to the beginning of 1998, I was part of Mohammed Al Fayed's organisation. I worked on the Brompton Road opposite Harrods in his radio station, Liberty 963, as it was then called, 96 through to uh, back end of 97. So I was working within the Harrods organisation, if you will, and I was part of history. I was there, right in the middle of it. So knew what was going on. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two videos. I'm going to do this video where there will be no spoilers, even though you know the story arc, you know the outcomes, you know everything about what went on, but do you? And I know what went on, I remember vividly what went on, and I know whether what Netflix and The Crown has produced is accurate or not. Those bits and pieces will come in video two. This is just a very quick oversight of the first four episodes of season six of The Crown on Netflix. The next six episodes are going to be December 14th. But these four episodes are all about the spirit of Diana. What does it include? Well, for me, the first two episodes, it conflated all of the information. It took timelines and has altered it. I know for one that Diana had been with Dodie Fayed for a few months. They identified Camilla's 50th birthday party in the July of 1997 and that's they have when the flotilla of press and photographers went out to the Jonquil, which is uh, or was Mohammed Al Fayed's yacht in the July. So that timeline is a bit vague. That wasn't the timeline at all. And look, see it this way. In all good lies, there is always a kernel of truth. And there's a lot of truth in season six of The Crown. And people are saying, oh, they've just made it up. Well, they may have had journalistic license, artistic license, if you will. But they have, in all good lies, a kernel of truth. So for me, the first two episodes are sort of the setup for three and four. In episodes one and two, they kind of give you the background, some of the context. We all know what was going on with Diana, hasn't it, Khan? And then Dodie Fayed. They offer you an explanation as to how they met. And as far as I'm aware, that's quite close and accurate. I know that Dodie's uh, engagement to the Californian model was, uh, was a bone of contention, if I'm allowed to use that phrase. But she did sue Dodie, and that's in there. So they have put truths in there, but they kind of mask. It's a bit smoke and mirrors-ish in the first four episodes. But the, the, the two episodes that you need to watch, get the context in the first two. Watch them by all means. There's lots in there, but episodes three and four are the jewels in the crown of series six. And I say that because there is simply fantastic acting. There's wonderful scripting and emotionally very, very, very engaging. I've watched all four episodes so I can talk with a degree of certainty. Elizabeth Debicki as Diana. Oh, she's going to get some awards thrown at her. Oh, her acting. I mean, it's, it's scarily unnervingly accurate her 
Diana mannerisms, her Diana voice, her Diana coquettish look. It's all there. Elizabeth Debicki on screen is the doppelganger of Diana. Amazing. And Dominic West has to be mentioned in the same dispatches as the then Prince Charles. Wonderful acting. And you only get to realise the impact of what went on as history, but also emotionally with the then Prince Charles. Imelda, Imelda Staunton is a wonderful Queen Elizabeth. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And it's all there. It's all held in her face. Everything that you need to know, it's there. Imelda Staunton is epic as the Queen. And Jonathan Price, yeah, he, he, he plays a good um, Prince Philip to the Queen, but it's all emotionally, emotionally raw and engaging. And poor Prince William. I mean, you know, we've got Harold, or Henry, as he now wants to be known, Prince Henry doing all, all kinds of stuff going, I'm the victim, I'm the victim. Well, let me tell you, mate, this portrays William as a very troubled young man. He was, he was but a teenager, barely a teenager when his mum passed. And it, it, there's no dialogue around what Prince William is going through, but it is there, very real for you to see. I reckon that, uh, you know, the Bobby Ewing Dallas shower scene, that should be getting massive repeat fees because it's almost, we, we've had it with, uh, with Dodgy Dave, the politician, coming back after eight years and everybody just thinks it's an aberration. And now we've got Diana the ghost. So it's almost like the Dallas shower scene. She disappears and comes back. How does she come back? Well, she's probably just been out for a shower or a dream or is it? There is something that I need to say. I think it was best they left Camilla out of this. She's there or thereabouts. It's very contentious, but there's not much of anything going on in this Series 6 of The Crown for Camilla and or Prince Harry. I think William, after you've seen it, you'll understand. And, and I would love to hear your comments about this. I, I know I'm being quite vague about things, but I have to be because I don't want to leave any spoilers, even though you know the story. I don't want any spoilers here, but I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments about what went on. And, and for me personally, I think um, William is going to be his grandmother's kind of monarch. He's going to be a very stoic king. And you can see he was very troubled in, in the crown. And I know they have artistic license. I've already said that. But there is an old saying, the crown weighs heavy. Is it going to weigh heavy on William's head after his dad steps aside on his 80th birthday? So they say. We shall wait and see. So for me, season six, I've watched all of it from the beginning as in The Crown, I think season six has delivered on many different levels and many different fronts. Episode three and four, for me personally, a tough watch at times because I know what I know and I experienced what I experienced, which I will bring you in the next video. But episode three and four, just magically and awesomely acted by the ensemble the Crown Ensemble, especially Elizabeth Debicki. And I do feel, so. I, you know, because of all the newspaper reportage, you know that they've, they've brought Diana back as a ghost, but it's a, it's a great ghost. It, the, the scene between Charles and Diana is beautifully acted, portrayed and scripted. Beautifully. And everyone, bizarrely, comes out of this positively. Except little Dodie. Lost his life in the same car crash, in the same tunnel, in the same country. And yet everybody forgot about him. I know that under Arabic tradition, the body has to be buried within 24 hours. And that was the case. I was in uh, the Harrods organisation at the time. But you will see, this broke Mr. Fired. This broke him. And you can see it. That's how good... Episode three and four of season six of The Crown is. And I will guarantee you that there will be award after award after award given to this and the actors and the scripting. 
And it's very, it was very clever in, you know, some of the iconic uh, pictures or images of like Diana and Dodie at the back of uh, the Ritz in Paris before they were going to get into the car. Diana in her blue swimsuit. Diana, importantly, in her leopard swimsuit. And I will come to that in another video. But they're all there. All the iconic uh, images of Diana and Dodie and Henri Paul, including Trevor Reese Jones, who's there, ever present there. And again, without spoiling the story arc, without spoiling anything in this video for you, I suggest you go and watch The Crown. Because I believe that episodes three and four, as difficult as they are to watch sometimes, they are without doubt some of the best TV of 2023.